And welcome back to Rural America Live with Raven Industries and KSIH Precision Technology. Of course, you're an important part of the show and we want to hear from you. So give us a call. The phone lines are open now. The number to call is 877-731-6733. I'd also be curious if somebody was at Farm Progress Show and they had the chance to see the unveiling. I'd like to hear your feedback. So questions, comments, give us a call. Now with that, let's chat a little bit more about automation and autonomy and, of course, the customer's journey. Now, Chris, how are Case IH and Raven meeting the customer's needs for both of these? Yeah, Ben hit on it earlier, but it, it's really about building blocks. So, yes, the, the ultimate goal that we're working towards is, is that Category 5 full autonomy. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is as we progress through these development pieces, we can take building blocks of, of the, the pieces that contribute to full autonomy and apply them to uh, equipment that we already have in the field. There's numerous examples of this. We've, we've talked a little bit about them, um, but things like, you know, hands-free end row turning um, or, you know, automating some of those pieces in the cab. Working with our customers to understand uh, what pieces of that, you know, process or those building blocks offer them value while, you know, ultimately still marching towards that, that end game of full autonomy. Now, Ben, venturing into the driverless autonomy, mm -hmm. what is an example of a solution besides, of course, Trident, where farmers can anticipate maybe using it in the near future? Yeah, well, if you remember when uh, Ben Cease was being interviewed, he was standing in front of a combine, and we had uh, at the uh, Egg PhD field days, we were actually demoing Harvest Assist and OmniDrive. OmniDrive is a uh, technology that we've had for a while as part of the Raven suite of autonomy products, which allows a tractor to be driverless and synchronize with the combine during a grain cart unload. Okay. And so OmniDrive has been on the market for a couple of years in customers' hands and enabling a tractor to drive it autonomously pulling a grain cart. And that has uh, been actually a big part of the development process. So some of the technology that's actually in the tractor is also in the Trident now because of how these technologies have merged together. Uh, then, as we keep evolving how the tractor can do different functions, we're able to build on that. So that same tech stack that controls its steering, its propulsion, and puts perception in place to be able to detect objects, all of that is the building blocks of DNA of autonomy. Mm -hmm. Baby steps along the way. Yeah. Chris, touch on that, if you would, uh, in the point that farmers don't have to go full automation mm -hmm. right away. Yeah, so we, we've talked about the building blocks, and then I, we talked about the, the five categories on the front side. So just reinforce that a little bit. Um, the, the first building block is, is auto guidance. Believe it or not, we still have a portion of our, our customer base that you know, has not adopted just the basics of auto guidance. So that's, that's where we start. The second is coordination and optimization. So there's there's several elements of this. Um, the, the two big ones are putting multiple machines in the field, sharing coverage, shutting sections on and off um, from you know your your peers' coverage, uh, as an example, um, and then getting into the connectivity piece. So remotely monitoring, um, you know, seeing when your fuel levels are low, seeing when an operator's driving too fast, those types of things. And then operator-assisted um, automation, really, which is when we start to bring in automating things in the cab. So what we're working towards here is getting to the point through the first three categories that you're really just sitting there as an operator um, until you reach the fourth stage, which is supervised autonomy. So all those pieces are happening in the cab. You're not touching the steering wheel. And then all of a sudden, you have the, the connectivity and the ro remote monitoring capabilities to you know, pull somebody uh, out of the cab and, and redeploy them in, in the field. And again, lastly, ending with full autonomy. And, and to make sure the differentiation there is understood, uh, it's the difference between you know, redeploying someone in the field, physically maintaining you know, line of sight, if you will, to the machine while it runs, to this category five, which is redeploying somewhere you know, totally off-site from the operation and coming back when the machine's finished. Ben, you want to add to that? Yeah, well, in, all, in all those explanations, there's a lot of pieces that both uh, Case IH and Raven have worked together on. And um, Raven has a couple of really neat products that have been out in the market for a long time. They're part of our Slingshot portfolio. So the Slingshot product group includes connectivity components as well as software. There's a lot of pieces in that that we're using in autonomy. And uh, I would like to point out, like JobSync, for example, is... Uh, where we're able to coordinate machines today. So even if they're being operated by uh, skilled 
skilled operators and there's no autonomy in there yet, having multiple machines in the field is, is complex. They need to each know where they are, where they've each done their job, and you want to make sure they're not uh, running over each other or overlapping. We also want to be able to compare you know, how are machines performing, where are they, and as Chris mentioned, you're doing things like planning the next job. Where do they go next? When will they wrap up the field that they're working on? How do we uh, plan the optimal logistics so that they're traveling field to field efficiently? All of that is part of the, the software tools that have been in place for a while, and now we're seeing those uh, flow into autonomy. Taking it into another level. Yeah. Chris, would you like to add more on that? Yeah, I think what Ben and I are both saying here is we, we can't, um, understate the importance of the connectivity element of this. And Case IH certainly plays in the space with the, the AFS Connect solutions also, but um, just to, to kind of bring it home on this point, uh, without the connectivity, the remote monitoring, the remote control, uh, none of the, the capabilities that we talk about with sensing perception in-field um, operations, they, they can't happen without the ability to, to do the remote element of it. So it is um, equally critically important that that we have those capabilities along with the the tech that you know ex executes in the field is the the syncing the job sync technology do you feel like we're just on the beginning of this and just sort of touching the, the end of the the nose on where we can go yeah I, I think that the when people see this in action with autonomy products they start to see how they can actually use it in in everyday farm equipment mm -hmm. and they're asking for how those solutions could be either adapted into their current fleet of equipment or offered from the factory as a new solution. I I see, especially as farms increase in size mm -hmm. and we see more and more of, uh, fleets of equipment running, that the ability to optimize those fleets, being able to run them as a coordinated operation is just a, a need to have for sure. Well, those larger fields also come with longer hours. So what about uh, how can automation maybe help to reduce some of the driver's stress? Well, as Chris talked about in the different levels of autonomy, operator-assisted autonomy involves use of a lot of sensors and a lot of uh, things that assist an operator, not just in uh, what we imagine as standing outside a cab, but when you're in the cab and all these complex things are going on, the ability to use the technology to, to reduce stress, to improve your longevity, to, to uh, improve the quality of the job that you're performing is really critical. So, uh, you know, we point out one of our um, great technologies we brought to market in the last few years is called VSN, which is uh, a camera and radar combination that allows machines to run on row. And you can hands-free drive even if the rows aren't straight, it'll always stay true. and that has been studied and not only through actual t uh, testing that we conducted with operators, but also uh, you know, with market research and feedback, we saw a huge reduction in stress and improvement in, in worker quality and reduction of safety incidents. And so that, that's really where we see a lot of benefit from technology initially, is just that improved work environment and the ability to keep people happier. Uh, if you're an employer and you have workers, everybody knows retention is all key. And yes. so these are the kinds of tools that are helping today. Help their job, not hurt their job, mm -hmm. for sure. Well, give us a call. 877-731-6733 is the number to call. And with that, uh, on the topic of automation, what Raven technologies are actually being used currently in Case IH equipment, Chris? Yeah, so the most recent example would be the launch of our 50 Series Patriot Sprayer. Um, so just to back up a little bit, uh, Raven and Case IH have worked together specific to sprayer technology for a number of years in the 50 Series while being a, a post-acquisition product if you will, is is really no different in that relationship and that the Viper 4 Raven display, um, Aimflex, nozzle control, the Auto Boom XRT um, is all included as part of the, the Patriot package from the factory, um, you know, inclusive of the Raven technology. Talk a little bit about the screen that we have playing right now. It's kind of interesting to see the technology in play, um, obviously slow speed <laughs> mm -hmm. but talk a little bit about that and how it's sort of the automation is playing out here if you would yeah so the the screen that we saw there um, was actually pulse width modulated nozzle control so there's there's a handful of things that does for, for us from an agronomic efficiency standpoint uh, this one specifically demonstrates nozzle by nozzle shutoff 
So optimizing uh, where you're putting product down versus putting product in an area, in this case, where there's a no spray zone, uh, or also where you can see right now it's coming into a previously applied, applied headland. So you're not doubling up on, on product control. Um, in addition to that, pulse width modulated control offers you know, agronomic efficiencies and chemical drift, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is, again, something that, uh, that Case IH and Raven have partnered with um, since, I believe, 2017. Very interesting to see it in action there. And of course, especially right now, whenever we're talking about so many input challenges and getting things just in supply, you don't want anything to go to waste. Also, folks being environmentally conscious, not using it on a place, a square foot where it doesn't need it. So a lot of good factors coming to play there. And with that, we have a caller from Pennsylvania joining us on the phone now. Go ahead with your question or comment. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Go uh, ahead, Jim. I think it was like last year or the year before I was on my way out to Yellowstone and uh, we pulled over to a rest stop to spend the night. And I was wondering if this uh, equipment works 24-7. You know, I pulled in the rest stop for the night and uh, here comes the machine coming across the field and he was out there working all night. I don't know if he was using GPS or your system, but uh, is this enable him to do all that work at night? Chris? Yeah. Uh, so, so a couple things there. One, um, operator in the cab or not, our, our equipment is definitely capable of running at night. The, the lighting capabilities of modern equipment is phenomenal in comparison to what I grew up on, certainly. Uh, the second piece of that is, is specific to the autonomy element, which is that the sensing and perception systems really don't care if it's light or dark out. Um, so they're they're capable of seeing you know things like uh, pheasants or or sinkholes or wet spots or or whatever the case is um, whether it's it's light or dark. So we don't we do not have a, a dependency on it being light out. Good to know. Now, something we chatted about a little bit later, and you also mentioned it as far as uh, labor is a big concern, not just in agriculture, but across uh, industry-wide right now. Uh, talk a little bit about how, though, this is not necessarily taking away jobs. It's just sort of allowing jobs to kind of maybe relocate around the farm, so to speak. Ben, you go first. Yeah, so when we heard Brady talk about this, this is a really good example. I mean, he's he's got him and his dad, and he's got some hired employees that work full time and then they have seasonal help at the peak seasons and they want to increase the size of their farm. So there's a great example of how they're going to use automation to really allow that existing group of employees to increase the amount of work they can do. Uh, we also know that customers are telling us that now that they've embraced so much technology on their farm, there's a real interest in young people to come back into agriculture. It's cool to work with technology <laughs> like this. This has a lot of similarities to exciting yeah. industries, right? So there's uh, uh, real evidence that a lot of young people are looking at it as a lifestyle opportunity to get into a career with a lot of a lot of. Uh, great rewards and you don't have to live in a high rise in new york city to make it happen mm -hmm. so a little bit of good news there as well too well gentlemen if folks wanted to find a, a little bit more learn a little bit more about everything we've talked about tonight where can they dig up that information uh, on our side it would be the caseih.com website okay yeah, and ours would be on the raven Dot com website. <laughs> so, even though we're sister brands, we do have uh, great information specific to each company on our websites. And it's specific to the uh, autonomy as well, too? Yeah, so we have a, a new website, pathtoautonomy.com, which gives uh, our, our customers an opportunity to specifically look at how autonomy products are being uh, brought to market and where they can fit on the spectrum of opportunity to, to install that automation. Okay, well, we've only got maybe about 60 seconds left. Quick last thought. Uh, what I would leave everybody with is what Raven and Case IH are doing together is just the beginning. What we see with the Trident is our establishing of a foundational uh, technology stack that allows us to scale across multiple platforms. We've heard the questions about where can we go next. I'll let you use your imagination, but point being is is we're well poised to, to go whatever direction we need to. And Ben, 20 seconds to you. Well, uh, ultimately for, for me, I love talking to customers. We want to encourage anyone who's interested to reach out to us. We have great dealers across the world. We have a lot of great employees that love talking to customers, and you heard that loud and clear throughout. So 
We love your feedback. We want to hear from you, and we would love to uh, work with you as we unfold these new products. Absolutely. Well, it's been a fun conversation, gentlemen. Hopefully, we've even spurred some young folks who might want to dig into this as a career down the road. Well, we have been talking with Raven Industries Director of Sales for North America and Australia, Ben Voss, and Case IH Precision Technology Global Director, Chris Dempsey, joining us right here in studio. And thank you for joining us on Rural America Live. Good night from Rural America's most important network. Thank you.